Hey productive people, how's it going? My name is Carter Sirach, the productive dude here on YouTube. And in today's video, we're talking about Notion's new grouping edition that they just added to the software. This is a new way that they're allowing you to manipulate how your data within your databases actually comes out and how it looks. And it's going to make your databases that much more powerful. So I'm excited to showcase this feature for you guys. Let's jump right into it. So just starting out, I have a blank page right here and I'm actually going to call this my hub page. Just imagine that this is the central point of my Notion account. And in today's video, I'm just going to add uh, two pages. So we're gonna add one page that's a task list and we're gonna create a table out of that. I'm gonna go back over to my hub and I'm going to add in a project list. So we're gonna go slash page we're gonna call it project list. Okay, that's gonna be a table as well. Now that I have these two pages added to my hub, one a project list and one being a task list, I'm going to fill those out and I'm gonna show you guys an example of how to use advanced grouping in Notion. All right, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse of me adding some arbitrary information into my project list and my task list. So I'm gonna run you through how these work just very quickly, just so you understand the mechanism behind this new Notion feature. So right now, the task list is filled with tasks and they are related to projects. And then I also have a roll up here that shows project type. These have a target date associated with them, and they also have this completion column that you can tick. If I go to the projects list, you'll see that these have related tasks, and these are all of the projects, their type, and the frequency of the project. Now, right now, I'm just viewing this project list as a table, but let's exercise this new feature that Notion is providing to us. So direct your attention up to the right corner because next I'm going to click on this group button. This is the new feature that Notion has allowed us to use. So just a quick caveat, before they did let you use grouping, but they only used to let you use it for status on the Kanban view. So that kind of limited the potential of using grouping and now they're allowing you to group based on any of the properties. So I can group based on a roll up, I can group based on a relation or a multi select or a select, whatever it may be. I'm just gonna click group and group by and then from there I'm going to group by project. And what you're gonna see is that's gonna load up this task list here and it's also going to load up this top section where it says no project. So these are all the tasks that don't have a project assigned to them. It can be useful to add new tasks in this view because you can add the task and then it will automatically move the project once you have the project assigned. So this makes sure that you don't have any tasks created that don't have a project. Let me show you an example. Let's say I wanted to plan a workout. So I might enter workout my legs. Next, I'm going to add a target date and we're going to make that the 21st. And then I'm going to go into project here, add it as a workout. And as you can see, it disappears right when I add that project and it didn't completely disappear. It basically just moved it down to all of my workouts down here. So as you can see, when this is grouped by relation, you're able to actually show uh, you know, all the tasks that have to do with a specific project. So these are the tasks that have to do with building a house. These are the ones that have to do with Christmas shopping, dog training, new setup, plant care, website design for PD, workouts, and YouTube videos. And it's all very organized. They also have these toggle buttons on the side, so I can come in here and I can make all of these small. And that way you can just see the counter for how many tasks that you have for the specific project that you're looking at. Just to hone in a bit further, you can also click on the group button right here and you can hide empty groups. It's also important to note that right now we are in a table view. So this is just going to pull up a bunch of tables essentially. If I wanted to, I could add a view, click board and hit create. So this is what it essentially looks like in a board view. 
Now, if I click into group here, I can also turn on color columns and that's actually just going to show the background color of whatever it is we're grouping by. And since projects don't really have a color, uh, it's just going to show up as gray. But if I were to group by something like status and we let's say added a status to work out for my legs, let's just add quick status. So now when we're grouping by status, we can see that the backgrounds are colored accordingly. You can also drag these into whatever specific order you are looking for. So now we have incomplete, working, and complete. I'm just gonna drag all of these so that they fit into one of these columns. All right, so now, as you can see, everything has its own category. Next, I'm just gonna hit subgroup, and I'm gonna show you an example of how you can use subgroups. So this is another new feature, this subgroup feature. So if I wanted to click project, now I have two groups that I'm working with. So horizontally, like this way, we're working with incomplete, working, and complete. So the status of the project. And then vertically, we're uh, talking about the project and which project is th this is involved with. So these are like swim lanes, I believe they're called. So if I scroll through this now, you'll see that we have a list of working in build my dream house. And then we have a list of working in Christmas shopping. Let's just say that I wanted to make that complete. Move that to working, for instance. Um, we scroll down here and you'll see that there's nothing that's incomplete in the dog training. So we might conclude that, hey, we're done with that. So I'm gonna close that and so on. It's pretty neat. There's so much more that this feature can do and I'm excited to integrate this in my future Notion videos. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this basic primer to using groups in Notion. And I hope that you guys are excited for this new feature just like I am. Let me know in the comments what you guys plan on using grouping for. I'm curious to hear and I always get the best ideas when I'm collaborating with people and I'm trying to actually integrate this into my real life. So I'm excited to hear what ideas you guys have for using grouping in Notion. Also subscribe if you enjoyed this video and hit the bell if you don't wanna miss the next one. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Are you still here? If you are, I just wanted to say thanks again for watching. Here's another video that you might enjoy, and here's a link that you can click to go ahead and subscribe to our channel. All right, we'll see you for real this time. Peace.